Oh. oh my God. What a useful gear tunnel. You're watching Throttle Hess. I'm Thomas. And I'm James. And this is the Rivian RT1. It's actually the R1T, but RT1's a better name, so I'm gonna call it that. What happens when you combine the zero to 60 time of a C8 Corvette, the utility of a Ford Ranger, the interior tech of a Tesla, and the curb weight of a rhinoceros? You get this, the fully electric Rivian R1T. It starts at $67,500, comes with 314 miles of range as standard, and yeah, it can do the off-road stuff, the Baja stuff, and the drifty stuff, no problem. On the face of it, it appears to be the ultimate do-all vehicle, but since most of us don't do all, how does it cope with the normal stuff? Let's find out. If you're new to Throttle House, we do car reviews, track tests, and quite a lot of messing around. So subscribe and hit the bell. I'm excited because this is the first time I've been in an electric pickup truck. It's a big deal because we've said for a long time that EV luxury cars and EV pickup trucks are going to be the best versions of themselves. And so far, we're being proven correct. This is a quad motor. EV truck. That means that there is literally an electric motor on each individual wheel. This is the first quad motor EV I've been in. And the advantages of that are huge. The biggest one is that it can dominate off-road. You don't need to use locking differentials if you have a motor on each wheel. This thing can just crush rock crawling. And then when you want to do some kind of rally drifty stuff, it'll do that as well. But out here on a road, it's not like it compromises the car in any way, because with 800 horsepower and 900 pound-feet of torque, it doesn't matter that it weighs about 7,000 pounds. It's so friggin' quick. Three seconds to 60. And another thing that I think is pretty cool is that they haven't hidden the electric motor noise too much. So when I put my foot down, you can hear the motors winding up. There's four of them. It sounds fun, it sounds cool, and of course, it's butter smooth. And the throttle is calibrated very well. It's not a punishing EV punch, and it can stop quite well as well. The brake pedal itself is pretty intuitive. It kind of is meshing with the regen, which James will talk about in a minute. But the brakes feel like they have power, and they're linear, which is nice. All right, hustling a canyon in a truck. Now, as Thomas said, this thing is 7,000 pounds. Our Ram full-size truck is somewhere in the mid 5,000s, and yet you would think that this, I mean, it drives almost like a slightly bigger Mustang Marquee. The way it is hustling its weight is madness. One thing that's new about this is the regen. And, and I say new in the sense that you really don't have an option to turn it off. If the tutorial's over, baby, you've got to use standard or high, and the standard one is quite strong. So if I come off the accelerator right now, it's braking. Half of this acceleration pedal is braking, and you cannot turn that off. For some people, that's gonna be a strange thing. I've really got used to it. You can one pedal drive in the canyons, which, like it or not, is actually quite a unique feeling because I'm so used to brake, managing brake and throttle in these canyons. Now, as we live more and more with this truck, I get more and more impressed with each minute because first of all, you know, as Thomas said, it's got motors on each wheel. This is also on adaptive air suspension. So right now we're running it in sport. So it drops the ride height. So I'm currently at 10.1 inches ride height. It actually tells you where you are. It also says, keep it on the track, which is really a bunch of BS because if you track your 7,000 pound truck, you're a lunatic. This doesn't belong on the track. And we actually have all terrain tires on it right now. So they're definitely the wrong tires for it. But what that does mean is that it's more controlled. And the steering in this is some of the best steering we've experienced in any vehicle in the last year or so. There's tons of feedback. 
If you get in a Tesla, it feels sharp, but you don't really feel anything else. This, on the other hand, is reasonably sharp, but it's got way more feedback. Like as I go over these bumps here, you can see the steering wheel move. That's telling me what the front tires are doing. The sum of all of these things means that not only is this massively composed and very quiet, by the way, on the highway, it works pretty much everywhere from a rock to a highway to a canyon road. And that is not something I've ever been able to say in any truck ever. He's having a hard time getting out. How you doing? Good? I'm good. How you doing? Oh, it's having a fit now. What's it doing? It's, it's getting revved up. It's getting, sounds like the air compressor's running. I heard they made it waiter less this year. There is, there is an right air compressor. It. Went right into it. Yeah. Uh, how's your voice, mate? Yeah, I'm recovering from a cold. I feel like a big old bag of buttholes right now. Well, I hope you don't give it to me because we've been quite close quarters in this. <clears throat> anyway. But I think so. that's what this vehicle is, isn't it? It's, <laughs> it's a vehicle that brings people together. Like, yes. there's, I've, I think I posted a video of you and Greg actually getting quite close. Uh, to oh, Instagram. Forget, okay. <laughs> you're going to pull that out now. Okay. Yeah, well, you know, you talked about the air compressor, so. <laughs> he was pumping a suction cup to the front of the car. Anyway. You, know, you call it whatever you want, mate. Yeah. I, I just realized, I was like, why, is, why do I love the color of this thing so much? And you know what it is? Why? Is that it looks exactly like Laguna Seca Blue from the uh, E46 M3, which, as everyone knows, is the best car and color ever made. Yeah, definitely a good color. This, yeah. this thing gets a lot of attention. Like, a, well, it is very new, but yeah. it's also like really distinctive looking. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I th but I think the Californians are a bit more clued into the new EV stuff as well. Because I remember when we drove the Hyundai Nexo and Kona Electric around here. Yeah. Those don't look that different and they got a lot of attention. A lot of attention. But yeah, yeah. We've, we've been accosted, you know, when we've been buying bagels, just in car parks. Yep. Everyone's going nuts for this thing. Yeah. Oh, is that the new Rivian? So it, they've achieved a unique look for sure. It definitely makes a lot of sense in terms of like physical design of the vehicle. It's not too big. Yeah. Right? It is still a truck, definitely, but it doesn't have any of the truck downsides. Like there's no differential hanging down. There's lots of underside clearance. It's got a, it's got a bed, but they made use of where there would normally be drive shafts and stuff, and they've got the, what's it called? The gear tunnel. The gear tunnel. The James tunnel, which you bullied me in. Yep. And it's got... Listen, I don't, you crawl into things, I don't know. It's got a frunk that opens and yep. closes automatically. All the stuff's open now. Look at this. I closed it already. It, we, doesn't, it doesn't come fully up. So, you know, in the F-150 Lightning, which I know people don't want to compare this to that because this is technically a smaller adventure vehicle, and the F-150 Lightning and the Silverado EV and the Hummer, they're all quite big. Yeah. But they're also, this, you know, they're the first four electric trucks. It's impossible not to compare them. Well, well Rivian keeps saying to us well, we shouldn't compare it to them. Yeah. It, really, it's in its own class. Is it? Or yeah. is it exactly in the class of the other EV pickup trucks that are coming out? No, it's slightly smaller, but it, it, I think the, the gross vehicle yeah. weight of this makes it a class 2B vehicle, which is the same as an F-250. Jesus. Yeah. It's heavy. It doesn't oh. drive that heavy, thankfully. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Right? But, and you gotta look like, where is the weight? Because this is hollow, this gear tunnel completely, lots of space inside, that's hollow. So it must be in the batteries. But we asked Rivian how much the batteries weigh. And what did they say? They, they said they don't want to focus on that. They don't want to focus on that. They want to focus more on the truck as a whole. Yeah. That was a, a non-answer. So yeah. That was, yeah. And, and the truck as a whole has a certain vibe to it. And it starts with this key. But yeah. let's talk about it a bit more on the inside. On the inside, yeah. okay. 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 And so they've gone for this really like REI, in Canada it would be MEC, yeah, Lululemon. Kind of like a- uh, Culture. Yeah, hit, hit the crag, go camping kind of. So the key, the key. Yeah, yeah, which is, what do you call this thing? A carabiner. Carabina. Yeah, this is uh, very much aimed at a very, very particular crowd, as is all of the rest of the marketing for Rivian. Yeah, you're not supposed to climb with it. It's not, hasn't, it's not rated for that. But, I would hope not. <laughs> but, it, and you can't see it at night. Yeah, because like, yeah, you can't. There's, they're not illuminated, they're not white on black outline. It's just, you can't see it in the dark. And it's kind of upside down. The, the icons are upside down. Yeah. It is maybe so when it's on your on your climbing harness, you can flip it up. Yeah. And then I don't know. Anyway, in the spirit of all of that stuff, this yeah. truck can do a lot of things. And there's some things we didn't mention on the outside. So that gear tunnel has attachments. It has a slidey out thing. It has a kitchen that slides out, which is yep. five thousand dollars extra. Yeah. You can get a tent 
thing for the back. Yeah, and again, then, all of these things are geared towards the kind of, uh, you know, 31-year-old couple that's going on climbing kind of adventures. Basically, there isn't a slide-out gun rack. No, but maybe there will be one day. But the, the, the truck bed comes out electronically. There is the air compressor, as you mentioned, which might be light or... Well, yeah, I, don't it, know. I think it weighed or less. Is. Um, there's also so, some outlets in the back. There's an electric mm -hmm. tonneau cover. Yep. Um, the, it, this feels a lot like a Subaru married a Polestar. In a good way. In a good way. Yeah, in a good absolutely. Way. And, and listen, I, I, I know I'm poking fun at like the whole climbing culture. I, I was, am a rock climber, right? Like I totally dig this, but yeah. it's maybe just a little bit too on the nose for me. You know, like, I don't know. I think once you're in it, it doesn't matter. No, because I love the interior of this. Uh, I love this. Like, look at these seats. I've got no problem with, I think, any single thing in here, except for one. We'll talk about that in a minute. But, like, the materials are beautiful. It comes in amazing specs. Yeah, this right? is the most boring interior spec. There's, yeah. There's, like, a yeah. green on brown. There's a white on, on a, a lighter wood. I, I, I'm, I'm so impressed with the interior here. There's so many good things. Like, the sound system, the Meridian sound system in here, is wonderful. You it can is. hear every single instrument being played in the song. And as you saw in the intro, this automatic it automatically kicks into playing off of this, whatever was playing in here. If, yeah, if you've got the Bluetooth on your phone, I think. Yeah, you yeah. just pull this out and it keeps playing. So you just walk away. It's so cool. And like there are other things. So this has a lot of this interface is very similar to Tesla. So Yeah, like like weirdly similar to yeah. Tesla. So if you go right? to the climate, you can move if I turn it on. Yep. It's going to be loud for a second, but you can move these around. But the difference is they're not hidden, which I kind of like, which means you get to watch, especially these ones, uh, this one here. Watch that. And oh, I can, cool. I, I can move it around. Oh, I see. I, I didn't notice that before. That's really fun. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, no, this is this is quite intuitive. It's, it's quick. It works. The only problem, and it's a biggie. No car play. No car play. Because, again... These California upstarts think their poop don't stink yep. and that they're better than CarPlay. And guess what? You're not better than CarPlay because... Fact, yeah, objectively worse, actually. Uh, yeah, we tested it. Yeah. And we, uh, we, were, we were actually very kindly invited to the Smoking Tire podcast. Yeah. And according to the Rivian, we were on time. But according to all of our other apps, we were going to be late. And we were late. We were late. So yeah. <laughs> sorry, 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 one, Zach. One thing they have done, credit to the phones, is this is a double... Uh, wireless charging pad. Yep. And it charges your phone really quickly. Yep. Some of them are really slow, and I really have enjoyed charging my. And right above this is a. What's the word you used? Over-engineered. Yeah. That didn't. That really did not need to be powered. No. As cool as it is, it didn't yeah. need to be powered. Yeah. But it's comfy in the back. We've got this glass roof here, which a lot of people because yep. you can't cover it. There's no. There's no. Um, it's very dark. Sunshade. Though. It's yeah. very dark. Yeah. yeah. So it allows you just to see the sky, but Alcantara. it doesn't. It doesn't cook you. This is the launch edition, so it looks like there's some yellow accents, which is... Yeah, we've got launch nice. edition there and a yep. nice bit of silver. Yeah. Uh, very, very few critiques no. uh, of the inside of this car. Uh, yeah. Windows are a bit slow, and the, the, the steering wheel adjustment is a bit slow as well. It's quite laggy. Yeah, considering, considering there is something on the market with the exact same style yeah. of adjustment. Oh, and another thing. I guess Tesla. I do have a few critiques. The parking cameras are full-on potatoes. Yeah, that's, right? that's not good enough. Right, it's just not. Um, and uh, we asked them and they said that that's one of the things that they're focusing on improving. But I, I still think that's a bit weird because this is otherwise a very lovely screen. Yeah, it's like the highest end iPad that you can get is what it looks like. Yeah, and, and you know, as far as having no CarPlay, there is Spotify built into this and yep. I've really enjoyed that. Yep. Um, but just the, the maps thing. As, uh, and again, the maps are quite nice, right? Th this, is, this is a really good graphic. It's quick. Yep. Uh, it, just, it just isn't, the traffic accounts for is isn't wrong. accurate, yeah. And the roots... And the roots weird, like it doesn't, it doesn't, it erase the bit that you've already done of the route. So if you have a zoomed out view, you've got like this whole squiggly line where you're like, I don't know where I am on You that. mean it doesn't erase? It, do it, it doesn't, it doesn't erase doesn't, it, yeah, 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 compared to... So it's distracting. Google. Yeah. Uh, but what is nice is that, first of all, because you, you don't use the CarPlay, this helps you know how much charge you've got left, it plans your route. Yes, um, yeah. And if you don't want this on the screen, which I doubt, you know, if you had CarPlay, it wouldn't happen. It shows you a third of your your actual dash is the map yeah, and your next direction, which is cool. Which I which I really like. Yeah. Um, the dash is great too. The dash is great. It's got yeah. everything you need. Yeah, they've committed to screens like Tesla have, but in a way that I think really works. I like it in here. I would I would totally own one of these, 
uh, yeah. from like an interior perspective, right? And to be fair, probably the rest of the perspective as well. Like, this is a very good vehicle. It's very, very easy to get it's along with. It's very easy to get along with. And yeah. I think, I think you, you know, where luxury meets EV is a match made in heaven. And I think mm. where EV meets utility as well is a match made in heaven. So yeah. this is the we're first. Wa we're waiting for EV meets sports car to be a match made in heaven. That should That one's harder. That, that one's, one's harder, harder yeah. That's the big question mark. But right now, this is a very usable future, I think. I've loved it. Yeah. Lots of automakers play dress up as next gen vehicles. A new face or a big screen, a lipstick Renault, if you will. But the R1T joins the echelon of vehicles that actually properly feels like everything it does is for a purpose, to move the game forward. Its acceleration is matched by its driving confidence. Its design contributes to its function. It rides really well. And quite unquantifiably, it's really cool. So all the attention this has been getting from truck owners, EV owners, and even just pedestrians, thus far seems quite justified. Hopefully, that stays true. Thanks for watching. Just chuck it in my hair. Not on the back of my hair. Okay. Okay, and yeah. here, let me get my arm and stuff. Give me some real sandy stuff. There you go, ready? Oh, yeah. oh. Oh. Oh, yeah, get it in there. Okay. It's good for the skin.